How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Cream City Cast. I am your host, Dylan Piccolo, as always. I am guest joined today by a special guest uh, close to my location in uh, Whitewater, a Whitewater graduate, a Whitewater football player, uh, and an ex- excellent one. Uh, 2019 Remington Award winner uh, at the Division Three level for the top center in Division Three, Nate Truin. Nate, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me. <laughs> yeah, of course. How's it going? Good. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about you uh, today. I know it's not always easy to talk about yourself, um, but you know what you're doing is kind of awesome. It's unusual, uh, especially for people from Whitewater. Uh, hopefully, trying to make it at the the next level in the NFL. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Um, kind of talk about how you got to Whitewater, um, transferring from Mankato after two years at Mankato. Talk to me a little bit about um, kind of the situation at Mankato and what led you to Whitewater? Yeah, so originally coming out of Milton High School in Wisconsin, I signed to go to Minnesota State Mankato, a Division II school. Uh, as soon as I got there, there's kind of a, there's some coaching stuff going on. So I kind of right away went into that. And my second semester there, my position coach ended up leaving and they moved a different coach to O-line coach and I just wasn't learning as much as I really wanted to so because of that I stuck it out another year so I spent two years at Mankato uh, and then after my second spring ball there uh, 2016 uh, I decided to transfer into Whitewater. Um, Talk a little little bit about what made you want to go to Whitewater. Well, a lot of it was it's close to home, so that worked out well, and the business school. So I graduated with a degree in business management, so obviously Whitewater being the business school it is, uh, that worked out well for me. Tell me a little bit about your time at Mankato. I mean, although you said there was some coaching uh, issues Talk about the experience you had being in like a weight program like that, going against that competition daily. How did that kind of prepare you to go into Whitewater, uh, you know, a division lower, obviously still some fantastic talent there, but how did that prepare you to walk in there and excel as a junior? Yeah, well, so with Mankato, there's a, a lot more things you get as a football player there. You get a lot of clothes, you get free cleats, you get free gloves. And one of the perks with being D2 is you have a separate weight room from the public. So with that, uh, the whole team worked out together. You're able to gain more of a kind of bond throughout through that. So with that, it kind of gave me a leadership role coming into Whitewater right away because I had been around that those two years at Mankato. So it really, it helped me kind of with that uh, going into Whitewater, really. So then when you got to Whitewater, um, you're under uh, a fantastic offensive line coach and Brent Brent Allen, who uh, was the uh, last Whitewater Remington Award winner. Um, Talk a little bit about that transition and kind of what Coach Allen did to um, kind of make you feel welcome and get you ready to go right away. Uh, You know, seeing that – you have this good talent. Now we just need to get him implemented in the system and see how he, you know, how you work out with it. Well, yeah, going into Whitewater, it wasn't a sure thing that I was going to play right away as a center. As they, as a year before I got there, they had a all American center that was going to be a senior that year I came in. So it was just him bringing me under his arm, kind of, giving me different techniques that I hadn't been taught before that kind of made me into the player I am today. And then when you look at what you kind of accomplished at Whitewater, uh, obviously this year, a 12 and one record reaching the national semifinal, uh, leading a top 25 scoring offense. Take me inside a week of Warhawk football. What are your kind of your roles? What kind of roles did you take kind of as the leader of the offensive line going into preparation and kind of game day stuff as well? All right. So we had three captains this year, uh, Harry Henschler, Bryce Lashinsky, and myself. Uh, Harry was kind of that uh, guy that would bring everyone in a huddle before a game and get us pumped up. 
where more so I was that leader by example, a guy that was always accountable, someone who, who others could, uh, they knew that I was going to give 100% every day. So um, really during the week, uh, usually Mondays were game prep, just going over who we we're playing against this week and kind of the game plan, what plays we're going to run and how it's going to be different than the week before, depending on like what defense they're going to run, whether it's going to be an odd front, even front, just a different front we haven't learned. So we'll go over that. And then Tuesday uh, before practice, we have film sessions. Uh, then we go into practice and after practice, we'll have another film session. Uh, Wednesday, um, a lot of times uh, me and a younger center would go in before our first meeting and kind of I'd kind of take them through what I'm thinking going up to going up to the line, basically just kind of making sure if something happens to me, he understood really what he has to do. Absolutely. And then, yep. So we do that. Going to our position meeting practice and then going into Thursday, Thursday was our walkthrough day. So we go into meetings and then we go into walkthrough and then we'd have a meeting after our walkthrough. And then Fridays would be another practice day. So we'd have position meetings, practice, uh, position meetings. And then if it was, yeah. So after that second position meeting, we'd have team dinner and then we go to team movie night. So, yeah. Cool. And then, so I wanted to move on to like, what do you think about your offensive line? What was special about it this year? Because I mean, you're 21st in third down percentage, 25, top 25 rushing offense, top 25 scoring offense. Um, you know, what made that group up front? You know, obviously there's a bunch of talent up front. What made it kind of all work? Yeah. So going into the season, uh, we, Really, nobody had any idea of what the starting five was going to look like, which was kind of nerve wracking. But uh, knowing Coach Allen, he was going to make something work. So going into week one, it was still a little nerve wracking. We knew who our first five was going to be. And we knew we weren't the best five, but we knew we were going to play like we were the best five we we're going to be aggressive as shit and every week and just kind of do our thing and that's really kind of how we set the tone each week and made us kind of into the old line that we were when i were i uh did camera work for uww tv last year yeah. so i would watch a lot of the games yeah. and it was definitely always a very physical battle up front between right. you guys uh and whoever you played against, because I think it's, you know, it's also telling the conference that you play in. And I think it's also gives you a lot of, you know, credibility when we start to talk about, uh, you know, potentially playing at the next level. And, you know, obviously right. why you got invited to the NFLPA game. Um, can you talk about uh, kind of the competition you win against kind of, uh, you know, kind of vouch for it a little bit? Yeah, so obviously the level of competition is a lot different. Uh, you're going against guys that are anywhere from 300 pounds to 340 there, uh, where at Whitewater you're going against guys that could range from 240 to really tops at 315. So with those guys that are weighing 300 to 340 at these bowl games, they move like they're at that 240 to 260 range so it is the pace of play is a lot faster obviously um they're a lot stronger but it's obviously something coach allen kind of prepped me for so i i i kind of held my ground so well that's good to hear i mean yeah, right. i i read that uh you know there's always, you know, there's not a bunch of sites, obviously, you know, that are right. sending out scouts, but I saw one and you made the first team on that list as the center. So, I mean, that's saying mm -hmm. something. And, right. you know, I think that's really cool. Obviously what you did out there. Um, when we talk a little bit more about the uh, kind of that jump to the NFL, um, you said the speed is different. What else kind of, you know, goes into that prep? You said, you know, we talked obviously prior to this and you're working with uh, an, a specialist and offensive line coach. Can you talk a little bit about the preparation you're kind of taking to get your body and your mind kind of ready for that next jump? Yeah. So 
the first thing I had to go through was kind of playing under center where our offense at Whitewater, uh, we, we were always in what's called shotgun. So obviously our center is not under me. So one thing about pro style offenses is the quarterbacks under center a lot. And that's what we saw during the NFLPA game where the majority of our snaps were under center. So with that as well, the quarterbacks we had had never played under center. So it was really a big week of trying to make sure that not only the quarterbacks could show they could play under center, but the centers could show they could snap with a quarterback under center. So that was a big part of the learning process right away. But now that that's gone, basically what I'm doing is uh, now I'm going over to Next Level in Waukesha uh, over there where uh, it's most known for like the Watt brothers. So I'm going over there doing my combine training and these past four weeks, I was down in the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas, working out with a guy named Duke Mayweather. Uh, he's a big guy in the O-line industry, just teaching. And then I was working out as well at a place called uh, Michael Johnson performance. So and then when you get all that workout in and, you know, you obviously hope to improve your times and combine, what is the next step for that? Uh, you know, uh, regional combine, super regional combine. Can you kind of explain uh, what your next steps will be in terms of that? Yeah. So the big combine is just known as the NFL combine, which is annually in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, I wasn't invited to that. Uh, I don't know when the final invites come out, but the first few invites have came out and I didn't make that. So now I am prepping for Wisconsin's Pro Day, which is March 13th. So I'll be over there at Wisconsin. Uh, there'll be, um, they have a few good old linemen. So there'll be a lot of scouts out there watching the old linemen. So that works out well for me. So. Once that pass, you basically just keep working out and that's when uh, private invites start happening. So each team gets, I believe it's 30 private invites for players. So it's just uh, trying to get that, as many of those as you can. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'll do those and that's basically, basically after that, uh, the draft happens. That's got to be really exciting. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I, obviously, you know, you go to Whitewater and, right. and, you know, I mean, Kumaro obviously was the last, Jake Kumaro right. on the Packers was the last guy to kind of uh, get to that level. And seeing him obviously have success with the Packers this year right. has to give you some hope. Have you spoken yeah. to him or have you reached out to any uh, kind of D3 or lower level guys that have made it and asked for any advice? Um, I really haven't, but uh, Jake's agent, his name's Ron Slavin. Uh, he's also my agent. So he's been able to help me kind of with that being a small school guy and kind of how to go throughout the process because of that. Talk to me about some of the people you met at the NFLPA. I mean, if you would just want to list them off, that's fine. But <laughs> just kind of give me the... Uh, Kind of give me the rundown. You can gloat a little bit. It's all right. <laughs> so with the NFLPA game, uh, it's it's a unique game from like the Senior Bowl and the East-West Shrine game where the NFLPA is the NFL's union. So they'll have some guys come in each night and talk to us about how like what GMs will look for. So we had a GM for the Raiders come in. Uh, so he talked about what really GMs look for, where one night they had like Richard Sherman, Calvin Ridley, and a couple other guys come in and just answer questions that we had. And then there's another night where we had the NFLPA's financial advisor come in and talk about, do you need like financial advisor? These people that are contacting you that say, hey, I'll help you. I'll be your wealth manager. Do you, do you need to kind of call them back? and? Really, in my position, I probably I don't need a wealth manager. Where, like a guy in like Aaron Rodgers' position, where he's making a hundred million uh, contract, he probably needs one. So, there is also a Panini a card signing event going on. So, there was a hundred and fifty plus NFL uh, players down in our hotel. So, 
there's like Lamar Jackson. Uh, I was in a elevator with Sam Darnold. Uh, so there's a lot of big name guys down there. So it was a pretty that, cool experience. And it had to be really cool doing it at the Rose yeah. Bowl as well. I right. mean, as right. big as the Rose Bowl is in Wisconsin, and I'm sure, you know, you were probably yeah. a Wisconsin fan growing up. That had yeah. to be it. Kind of awesome, and you won, right? <laughs> right, one and zero in the Rose Bowl. That was awesome. That, hey, yeah. well, I mean, what the Rams play there, so maybe you can, maybe you can add to that record there. Maybe a couple more W's. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, Nate. Uh, it was really fun yeah, to course. talk to you. Uh, I am also putting out a story in uh, the UW Whitewater publication, uh, the Royal Purple, that'll be out uh, next week. Um, and obviously we are going to follow you on your journey and we wish you the best of luck. Um, Nate, so any last words you want to say? <laughs> just thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, just thank you. All right. Thanks, Nate. Again, this was the Cream City cast. If you want to check out all the latest stuff we have, go to creamcitycentral.com covering the latest in Wisconsin sports, brewers, badgers, Packers, Bucks, Wisconsin, Whitewater. Now we're all putting it together. So, all right. Well, we should have the uh, Milwaukee Bucks versus Charlotte Hornets preview out. We'll talk a little bit about Chris Middleton uh, as well. Check out, I did an hour long uh, uh, NBA look around podcast uh, with uh, Jerry Nagobi, a Whitewater graduate assistant. Um, if you want to check that out, uh, a lot of cool content there as well. So, we want to thank you once again. Thanks, Nate, for coming on and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. You as well.